if your goal is psychological restoration, if you feel like you really could use some stress reduction, and frankly, who can't right now, you yeah. know, um, then the research seems to show that there's a shortcut, you know, to feeling restored emotionally and psychologically um, the more present you are. Yeah. So the more you can sort of turn off, you know, the internal soundtrack of your own mind, you know, running through your to-do list and thinking about your conversations that you might have had that might be stressful, which we all do, right? We ruminate on these, you know, aspects of our lives. But to the extent that we can really tune into where we are, um, it, it, the science seems to show that that actually is associated with greater well-being, um, you know, greater positive moods, um, and, and these other kind of nervous system measures that seem to be so powerful and so beneficial. Welcome back to the Max Out Show, where today I'm joined by the price-winning journalist and author of The Nature Fix, Florence Williams. Florence has spent years of her life sharing both the science and practice of using nature to create better brains and better lives. So I'm excited to dive deep today into how you use nature to make us happier, healthier, and more creative. So Florence, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. It's great to be here. I'm super excited to have you. And so before we really dive into some of the adventures that you've undertaken, some of the science behind how nature can actually make us better, can you first share with us what actually drove you into this project of seeking out nature in the first place? Yes, thanks for asking. Um, well, I have been someone who has always been really connected to the natural world. Um, in, in my adulthood, I've spent the last 20 years living in Montana and Colorado in the Rocky Mountains. But then my family moved to Washington, D.C. And I found myself really um, sort of shaken up <laughs> you know, by this dramatic change um, in location. And it just started me thinking about how our external landscapes get reflected in our internal landscapes. As a science journalist, I was really curious about what the science had to say about why I was feeling so much more stressed out away from kind of my usual nature connection and my nature trails of the mountains. Um, and so that, that's really what started it. I, I got an assignment from Outside Magazine and then from National Geographic. Uh, and, and that's when I really realized there's so much out there, so much interesting research, so many interesting sort of clinicians and groups taking advantage of the healing powers of nature um, that there was a whole book there. Yeah, absolutely love that. In fact, like the, the move that you made from sort of this country life and having the mountains and nature to, to the city life in Washington is, is pretty much what human beings have done as, as a society over the last couple of hundred years. So can you maybe share how, how that shift, um, you know, sort of industrial revolution, everything has created some of those detrimental impacts that we now see? Yeah, that's exactly right. My personal journey really just reflects, you know, these trends that humanity is, is making now. Um, I think it was in 2008, uh, global populations for the, for the first time um, had a majority living in cities yeah. than living out of cities. And so some anthropologists think we should call ourselves metro sapiens <laughs> as a species. And yet we know so little about what that change, that profound change in habitat, that human migration, you know, really means for our brains and our bodies. Um, it's really an experiment, you know, how, how we behave differently uh, when we're cut off from sort of the cycles of nature um, and the sort of stress reducing qualities of, of seeing beauty and, you know, seeing the night sky and seeing the moon, you know, what does that do to our psyches? What does it, what does it do to our sense of community um, and our sense of ourselves? That's, those are all really interesting questions. And, you know, science can't get at all of those, but, but it can um, start to, you know, make some inroads and some, some insights. And it's been really interesting. Yeah. And it's so fascinating, like how deep science actually goes. In fact, in, in one of your blog articles, I think, I read about the, the impact of, of just the birds tweeting in the sky and how that changes our brain to these alpha wave states, which I thought was just nuts. 
So can you share a little bit about the, the positive impact that we get when we you know, go back from the, to, to nature? You know, all the people stuck at home right now, living in big cities. If you can go out in nature, like what are some of those positive benefits that people can get? Yeah, well, in the book, one of the first places I went was Japan, um, where researchers were studying the impacts on human physiology and the human nervous system um, in different environments. And what they found was that even after just 15 minutes of people kind of walking around a forest, um, their blood pressure dropped 2%, their heart rates dropped 4%, their blood pressure was dropping um, and their stress hormone cortisol was dropping 16%. And this is just after 15 yeah. minutes of kind of opening up their sense, people opening up their senses outside. Um, so, you know, they weren't, it wasn't like they were walking outside with their phones, um, you know, or, or multitasking as some of us tend to do outside. Yeah. But the, the Japanese have really sort of perfected this art of what they call Shinrin Yoku or forest bathing. Um, and the idea being that you are very present uh, in the natural world where you, you really pay attention, you know, to the sounds of the birds uh, or to the sounds of water. You, um, you know, kind of take in the wonderful aromas of the forest. Uh, maybe you um, drink some tea, you know, made from the bark of, you know, you know I mean, they have all these rituals and, and ways to really be mindful and present uh, in those environments. And so, uh, you know, that's pretty dramatic after just 15 minutes. And then, yeah, you, you mentioned brain waves. There are other studies showing that, um, you know, when we look at certain fractal patterns found in nature, um, and fractal patterns are patterns that repeat at different scales, right? So, like, you see them in trees and you see them in clouds um, or along coastlines or, you know, waves, that, that those looking at those patterns um, changes our brains a little bit. And it, as you say, some studies have shown that it releases more alpha wavelengths in our brains um, that are associated kind of with a state of calm, but also alertness. And um, yeah, when we hear bird song, we also become a little bit more alert and in some ways calmer, actually, because when, you know, when humans hear bird song, sort of in our deep evolutionary past, that's generally a sign that all is right with the world. You know, there isn't some weird change in barometric pressure. There isn't a big predator approaching. You know, ha happiness is the sound of bird song. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting that, like, subconsciously, even our modern brains, you know, can, can tune into that. Yeah, that is so fascinating and you know, I love how there's, there's so many different pieces of, of research behind this really. And you mentioned one really important point uh, because this is one of the things that really drives me nuts. It's like when you see these people like out in the forest, out at the, like, the ocean or whatever, and they're just on their phones taking selfies. And like that's the whole point of their trip. Uh, <laughs> and it, it really destroys the whole experience, right? So what you said before about really being present. Taking, putting your phone away and just actually listening to those sounds and enjoying the beauty that nature has to offer, that really seems to be one of the keys to making this work, right? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons um, to be outside in nature. And, you know, if, if you have to be on a phone call, you know, if you have to do oh, a yeah. meeting, mm -hmm. um, you know, or if you want to listen to the news or whatever, I mean, yeah, sure. Being in nature is a great place to do what you might be doing anyway. But if your goal is psychological restoration, if you feel like you really could use some stress reduction, and frankly, who can't right now, you yeah. know, um, then the research seems to show that there's a shortcut, you know, to feeling restored emotionally and psychologically, um, the more present you are. Yeah. So the more you can sort of turn off you know, the internal soundtrack of your own mind, you know, running through your to-do list and thinking about your conversations that you might have had that might be stressful, which we all do, right? We ruminate on these, you know, aspects of our lives. But to the extent that we can really tune into where we are, um, it, it, the science seems to show that that actually is associated with greater well-being, um, you know, greater positive moods, um, and, and these other kind of nervous system measures that seem to be so powerful and so beneficial. Yeah, so one, one thing that, that really becomes clear, right, is like it actually helps you lower all the stress and all those negative things we find on when it comes to mental well-being and all those same time increase happiness and increase some of those positive emotions that we want to feel. Um, but I know you've, you talk a lot also about creativity and some of those 
performance boosting aspect. So, you know, for people who are really focused on their building their business or chasing their dreams that don't, don't really want to like spend time just to be happy. Why should those <laughs> people also, you know, spend some time in nature to actually become more productive than at work? Yeah, there's some science, some science that indicates that um, when we can take little breaks in nature, even micro breaks, uh, you know, get a sort of micro dose of beauty and awe, that um, it rests our thinking brains, even for just a few moments. Uh, and when we rest our thinking brains, then when we go back to work, uh, when we go back to solving problems, you know, we're a little bit fresher and a little bit sharper. So, uh, you know, I, I use the word microdosing. <laughs> yeah. there, there's a indication that, you know, like even kids whose schools look out onto green schoolyards, you know, compared to kids whose um, schools are, you know, looking out onto a brick wall or something like that, um, those kids have slightly lower stress levels that then gets translated into higher test scores. Uh, you know, if they can get a little break by looking out the window, um, it helps them cognitively too. So both adults and kids seem to benefit from this. And then of course, th there's a dose curve here too. So the more time you spend outside, um, you know, the greater those creativity effects might be. So there was a researcher I talk about in the book, um, David Strayer at U in the University of Utah, and he tested people for creativity backpackers before and after a three-day backpacking trip. And he found a 50% improvement on these creativity tasks um, after people had been outside, you know, just kind of waking up their sensory brains and dialing down their sort of direct attention brains, their task-focused brains. Um, and, and so that ended up being, he, he says, the, you know, that part of our brain is like a muscle. And if we can rest it, then when we come back, we're, we're just really fired up. And, you know, and as a, as, a, as a scientist, he noticed that he got his best ideas when he was outside in nature and not necessarily, you know, trying to solve problems, but just letting his mind kind of wander and, and experiencing the sort of soft fascination of being in the natural world where you're not sort of forcing your brain to like necessarily focus on a particular task. Yeah, that's just mind blowing how, how those effects also translate then into creativity and, and getting better ideas. And I know you've been on a lot of adventures. You mentioned the forest bathing in Japan. What were some of the most fascinating things that you found? I know you've done ecotherapy in Scotland. You've worked with veterans. So what were some of the, the most fascinating stories and experiences that you've had along your own journey of really figuring out all this stuff? I, I found it really powerful and moving to journey into the wilderness with uh, a group of veterans who have post-traumatic stress. And, and actually, I've done that trip twice, um, once with a group of just women veterans and once with a sort of co-ed group. And um, in, in both cases, it was just really, really moving to watch how, um, you know, people with PTSD, they tend to generally sort of withdraw from the world because they're overstimulated. You know, they hear a book drop and it sounds like gunfire. Um, their nervous systems are really on high alert all the time. They're sort of hyper vigilant. But when they're out in the wilderness for a period of time, um, you know, they start to feel more comfortable and they actually want to open up their senses because you want to hear, you know, the call of the eagle and, you know, hear the rush of the river, see the sunset on the canyon walls. Uh, and, and when the senses open, then you can watch them sort of relax a little bit and come out of their shells. They reported that they were sleeping better, you know, food tasted better outside. There was this really dramatic shift in their nervous systems. You know, their sort of um, sympathetic nervous system really dialed down and their parasympathetic nervous system came online, more the rest and digest branch. Uh, they were able to sort of laugh and sing and make friends. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to know how long these effects last, but there's starting to be more research, um, you know, on, on groups with trauma like this who go into the wilderness. Uh, and it looks like there are some real lasting effects, but it's also important to keep these relationships active, to keep the connection to the natural world kind of going and strong, because it's not just a one dose and you're done. You know, yeah. it, this is something that the human brain has really evolved you know, to be connected to the natural world. 
and um, so different studies are looking at kind of how much nature we really need. <laughs> and uh, I think it's, you know, probably a little bit different for everybody, depending on sort of where you are in your life at the moment. Um, but it looks like, you know, at least um, two, two, maybe hours a week of, of time in nature seems to be kind of a sweet spot, at least based on recent studies in the UK. You know, so if we can, we can get out a couple times a week. Uh, and it doesn't have to be exercising in nature. It can be, you know, sitting in, an, in a quiet spot, listening to the birds, maybe eating lunch outside, maybe just going for walks in the evening and looking at the sunset. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a wilderness area. It can, it can be an urban area where you're tuned in, you know, to what, what nature is doing and what the cycles of life are doing. There are sort of, you know, different prompts that you can give yourself to help kind of tune you into the present moment. And I've, I've really learned how to do that, yeah. you know, um, during the course of writing this book. And, and also, especially now during the pandemic, when, you know, I'm not traveling across the country to wilderness areas, I'm really just traveling down my street. <laughs> you know, to look at the and it's been great. Yeah, I, I love that. And this is such an important point that you mentioned here that it I mean first of all it doesn't take a lot of time because two hours a week if you don't have two hours a week to, to just go outside and enjoy life then there's probably something you got to figure out in your life right um, and at the same time it's so important to notice that like it's not this one time done and like do it and done deal right like it's just like working out it's just like brushing your teeth you need to get that consistent like just like exercise the consistent like going out of nature and constantly revisiting those effects and those experiences and so how do yeah, you make sure to it's like yeah. eating a good diet you know it's just something like we need to we need to mo modulate our media diet so that we're not just looking at screens all the time um, and we need to figure out how to sort of increase our our sort of regular drip <laughs> you know <laughs> of, of nature too yeah yeah so you mentioned before you know you just sometimes you're just walking down the street so what do you do then because because this is something many people struggle with right they go outside and want to do this stuff but then there's still so much in their head thinking about like the problem at work and like the thing that happened. What do you right. do then to, to really make sure that when you're in those experiences, you can actually fully enjoy them? Yeah, I have a couple of tricks for that. So um, one thing I do is I ask myself some questions, you know, to sort of pull me into the present moment. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask myself, oh, what, bir what birds can I hear? You know, can I hear any birds right now? And, you know, it's funny because if sometimes if you don't ask yourself that question, you don't necessarily pay attention, right? <laughs> And so I, I direct my focus um, onto what I'm what I'm hearing, um, and I, I focus on things like the sound of the wind. Can I hear what the wind is doing? Um, can I hear any water? You know, and of course there are sounds of the city in the background too, but those aren't the ones I'm trying to sort of pull out. And then another thing I do is I um, I love to sort of grab onto um, leaves, you know, parts of you know, little parts of plants, maybe, especially I find the evergreen trees, and the conifers, you know, I crumble those needles up in my fingers and I inhale wow. um, the wonderful smells of conifer trees. And, and, and science has shown that that seems to be linked to um, an immediate boost in mood. Uh, you know, our olfactory glands really go right into our sort of emotional brain. Um, but, but also they seem to help increase our killer T immune cells, believe it or not, because the trees emit these aerosols, these wonderful smells, in order to protect themselves from, you know, fungi and bacteria. And there seems to be kind of a human response to that too, where, where our own immune system seems to sort of wake up a little bit in the presence of these wonderful smells, which I think is fascinating. And of course, something that we all are particularly interested in right now, right? How can we yeah. boost our immune systems? So um, a researcher I met in Japan, he says that our killer T immune cells remain elevated for up to 30 days wow. you know, after we spend time in the woods, um, but they're most elevated after seven days. So, you know, his recommendation is go into the woods, <laughs> you know, smell these smells um, at, at once a week if you can, but uh, at least try to go once a month. You know, and maybe spend a, spend a day or half a day just, um, you know, walking through the woods and enjoying, enjoying that particular kind of space. But it doesn't have to be woods. You know, there are, there are plants all over the place, even in the desert, you know, that smell terrific. Um, and, of course, in the desert, you get these really, like, awe-filled vistas, right, where you can see so far and you get a sense of vastness. Um, that experience of awe 
is also very important for our well-being um, and for our own kind of, you know, putting our, I guess, putting our own problems, right, into perspective. When we can feel smaller in the universe, it's actually really, really good for us to feel that way. Yeah, this, this reminds me of one of the quotes of yours that I absolutely loved. You said, Buddha, Jesus, and Reese Witherspoon all went to the desert to seek wisdom. <laughs> I thought that was, that was such a brilliant thing. So can you talk to us a little bit about this, the sort of apparent like shift maybe also over the last couple of years towards doing those kind of really long trips, you know, just as Buddha and Jesus and, and Reese Witherspoon in the movie or Into the Wild layers. There's been so many great movies over the last couple of years around people just going out and like embracing nature, going for a week or two on these long hiking trips. So, yeah, so I mean, it, that's true. I mean, uh, you know, all over Europe and, and also in, in the United States, we have these really wonderful sort of long distance hikes, right? And these long distance trails, pilgrimage routes, or, you know, in, in the United States, it's a lot of mountain trails. Um, and a lot of people have written about finding sort of redemption, you know, finding salvation, really being able to work through trauma or grief. Um, people write about walking off the war, you know, that's kind of an expression. Mm. Um, there's something about that kind of bilateral movement, you know, the exercise of walking those long trails that seems to help really soothe, you know, the nervous system. Um, and also, I think just living with the cycles of nature, you know, for that long, you know, weeks at a time. Um, in, in the book, I talk a lot about the three day effect, you know, which is sort kind of how our brains change after three days. Um, I don't write about what happens after three days, but I think that that's a really interesting, you know, question that people really do seem to sort of change their lives, you know, based on these kinds of rites of passage, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, that certainly human cultures have, um, you know, privileged for millennia, right? We used to do rites of passage all the time as, you know, parts of, you know, adolescence or, um, marriage or these various life transitions um, where you kind of leave one life and you enter another and it's ritualized in the natural world. I think there's really a reason for that and it's because out there we have the time and space you know to really think about who we are and where we fit in our society um, and you know it's very elemental like we're stripped down of sort of our cultural baggage and we can really we can really get to the heart of um, you know things that are important to us. Yeah, for sure. I absolutely love this, especially this idea of, of these, these rituals of passage, right? Where like you go and you enter into this, this challenge or, or this, this week long, this two week, whatever it is, right? Of just walking and being present and you come out another person, you're transformed afterwards through the experience they had in between. And I find that so fascinating. You talk really well. And I love that about like how like people in the past used to have all these, these rituals, right? And how we sort of lost these in, in today's society. So, so are there yeah. any suggestions you could make for people? Well, I do think that um, there's a little bit of a resurgence of interest in this, especially for young people, you know, who are so uh, connected to their devices right now. I think a lot of parents and educators are very interested in, in figuring out ways to kind of, you know, remove kids from, from modern life for a few days and, and help them think about these bigger questions, help them be challenged, you know, in a healthy way. Um, there are a lot of programs now uh, taking kids into the wilderness and, you know, at around this adolescent kind of cusp. Uh, I am also really interested in programs for women, you know, going through transitions during this life, life transitions. And, and I think that um, uh, as, as we sort of emerge at the other end of this pandemic, that, that we hopefully will see this continue, you know, these programs um, that take kids out into the wilderness. I think they're very, very meaningful. For sure. So what are your own personal favorite ways to, to go out and enjoy nature? Do you have any specific favorite things to do? I do. For me, I, you know, I think everyone has their own sort of favorite kind of landscape. Um, and I really encourage people to just pay attention to, you know, what they love the most and, and then, to, you know, try to spend time there. For me, it's rivers. I love rivers. Um, I grew up canoeing with my dad in, on rivers. And now um, where I live in Washington, D.C., I often just walk down to the Potomac River, 
which is about a half a mile up from my house. Um, and I love to sort of, you know, watch the fish migrate. I love to watch the birds on the river. Uh, it's still a very urban environment. You know, there's like a freeway, and there's, you know, the airplanes. Um, but I still feel like I'm on a river. And, uh, you know, I can kind of watch the seasons, you know, really roll in and out, which is fun. Um, and I, of course, love a wilderness trip on a river too. So, you know, if I can get in my canoe or in a raft and, you know, go out for, a few days every summer. Um, the, for me, that's just a great experience of joy. I, I love to do it with my family. You know, kids love it. Uh, it's, it's a great way to really be with your friends too and be social and sort of bond out there and forge, forge deep friendships. Um, yeah, I love it. What about you? Oh, it's the same. I love water. So for me, it's more oceans oftentimes or lakes. Um, but I also live close to a river here, super beautiful, right through the center of Switzerland, and just gorgeous to just go there, have like have a swim, which is amazing here, and yeah. and just yeah, just see the like the sunset or the sunrise going above, and it's just it's just beautiful, and just you feel like the the relaxation just so quickly coming over you, which is amazing. Yeah, you really feel like you're in a different world. Yeah. Totally, totally. So, so what are, you know, I'm super curious, like with all of these benefits, you know, from science and people really feel this, what stops people from going out in nature more? Like what have you seen sort of as the biggest, you know, excuses or reasons why like people don't spend enough time out there? Mm. I think part of it is uh, sort of um, psychological in a way. I mean, I think a lot of people, when they think, and, and there have been studies showing this, you know, if you ask someone, what is nature? A lot of adults will say, well, it's a national park. You know, it's Yosemite, it's Yellowstone. Um, and they sort of overlook the benefits of nearby nature, you know, thinking it's just not the real thing. But if you ask a kid, what is nature? A kid was more likely to say, oh, nature is, you know, the caterpillar, you know, in my backyard or this like cool looking fern, you know, cropping up in this crack on the sidewalk. And um, it's a much more generous version of nature. And I, you know, I, I think if we can all sort of access the kid <laughs> within us, you know, so that we can appreciate just these really small little glimpses of the natural world and tune into them, um, I think we'd all be a lot better off and, and would maybe start to understand the value too of, of even urban nature. So I think that's one thing. I also think um, that, you know, there are so many temptations being inside now, right? It's so easy to have fun in your house because you've got the internet and you have video games and you have Netflix. Um, and it's, it's hard to compete with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I really encourage people to pay attention to how they feel after being outside. And, you know, not to just multitask when they're out there, but to really kind of focus on, on the wonderful elements of nature. And then, you know, I think that they'll notice that they actually sleep better, you know, after they've been outside, that they feel a little calmer, maybe that they're nicer to their loved ones, they're in a kind of a better mood. Um, it's easy to sort of overlook those small benefits because they're subtle, but they're super important for our day-to-day -day happiness. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Now, before I ask my final question, where can people connect with you and your book online? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. Um, all that stuff is available on my website, which is um, florencewilliams.com. And there are links there for, you know, Instagram and Twitter and, and books and audio. I've done, I've made three podcasts and those are up there too that are kind of related. So, Fantastic. Now, what does it mean for you to max out your life? Um, for me, it means people and it means nature. So it means really strong relationships and friendships and being outside. Absolutely love that. Florence, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Max. It's great. All right, guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you gained some valuable ideas, tips, tools, tricks, mindsets, belief systems that will hopefully inspire you to take your life to the next level. At the end of the day, guys, it's all about application. The only thing that's going to set you apart tomorrow from where you are today is how much action you take with those ideas that you gained. And so I really want to challenge you at this point to you know, not just listen to this passively, to not just consume this you know, passively, just 
thinking about other things, but to really take those lessons, take those ideas that you just gained and start applying them to your life. To so really start taking action and sprinting towards those goals and those dreams that you have in your life. Now guys, at this point, I wanna ask you for a huge favor. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider heading over to iTunes and leaving a review as that helps me really grow the show and reach more people, impact even more people around the world. You know, if you have a family member, a friend, a loved one maybe, that you think could benefit from this content, please consider you know, sharing it with them, forwarding to them, as that helps us really build a community of like-minded people that are all about maxing out their lives. Now guys, with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in today. I really, really appreciate it. Stay strong and see you tomorrow.